Please make sure all cell phones are silent. That's good. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. no okay. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Cynthia Smith and I will be your moderator for this evening's lecture. Welcome to another lecture given by the Tampa class. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to sure and prove the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating toward eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given by our founder Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We held classes in the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you to the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joe Turner, and President Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we used the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce a sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderers of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn the cloud all around the edge of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is having a shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given to salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. 
also in the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school we shall prove that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as He really is and actually, actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating in the mystery of iniquity or in urge of the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. At this time we have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Carol Miller. Our scripture lesson this evening is Psalm the 19th Division. Who do you want to read the scripture? The girl's not in here. I'm reading. Me. Uh, <laughs> Psalms, the 19th division, will be re read by Dr. Pamela Turner. Our scripture readers tonight are Drs. Pamela Turner and Lisa Zizi. Okay. No music tonight. Oh. Let's bow our hearts and minds. Thank Yahshua for allowing us to come together once again. We ask that he opens up our minds, quiets our minds, opens up our minds to hear what he has to say to us. And um, just uh, hope that he will give us something to go out of here with that we can rely on, we know that we can rely on Him and that He opens up our, He nourishes our souls, let me put it that way, let's hope that He nourishes our souls and um, gives us these revelations that keep us coming back. So with that I'll say, and thank you for everything that you've done for us so far, Yahshua. And I'll say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Good evening, class. Good I'll evening. be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trina of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Psalms, the 19th division. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. 
There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Yet their message has gone out through all the earth and their story to the end of the world. In, the, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, mm -hmm. which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. That was Psalms 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our first speaker tonight will be Dr. Charles Marshall. The other way. I'm kind of upside down anyhow, ain't I? <laughs> Thank you. It's always a pleasure just to even come to class, mm -hmm. much less, you know, have anything to say. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can do is hope that Yahweh puts the words within my mouth so that uh, somebody will get something out of this. Now the scripture tonight, the 19th division of Psalms, is talking about how the creation is talking to you. Now this is a good place to go when somebody doesn't believe in the Bible. Because what we can do down in these classes is that we can show how science and theology go together. Which is something that the world out here can't do. Now, I'm an uneducated idiot. <laughs> didn't care anything about education before I came down here. I'm just saying that to show you that anybody can understand this. I understood, I knew nothing about the physical body or the Bible that much before I came down here. I had read the Bible, I thought I knew what the Bible said. I came down here and found out I didn't. So, could you start with uh, verse 1 there please, in uh, Psalms the 19th? And then uh, I'm going to want Exodus uh, 24, I think it is. 25. 25, okay. Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Now the heavens are showing, showing, declaring, that is, the glory, and the firmament is showing His handiwork. In other words, we can look at this creation and see something about our Creator. Okay, go on. Two, day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. Every day is speaking to us. Every night is speaking to us. This creation in every aspect, in every way, is speaking to us. Read. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Next one, please. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. And I remember I, years and years ago, when I came into class, I was explaining this teaching to someone. And they said, well, how about the poor people in Africa? And I said, well, the sun shines and sets. Days go on. The creation goes on. It's a testimony. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, and besides, if you're worried about the poor people in Africa, why don't you learn something and then you can go teach them? <laughs> you know, right. you're, they're worried about everybody else. How about yourself? Mm -hmm. Before you can straighten somebody else out, you've got to get it straight yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, here he talks about that he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Before I came down here, I didn't know anything about a tabernacle. The only tabernacle I had ever heard of was the uh, Mormon Tabernacle Choir. That's the only one I'd ever heard about. Mm -hmm. So I came down here and they started teaching me about this tabernacle. Now, this tabernacle, this tabernacle pattern, the pattern of this tabernacle, and I'm going to say this, and it's a very bold statement, this is the pattern to everything in the universe. Nothing, absolutely nothing, does not go to this according to this pattern. Even Satan himself has to go according to this pattern. Everything. It's a bold statement, but that's what we'll do tonight, is try to prove that to you. Okay, now this was given to Moses in a vision and a revelation. When he went up on the mountain here, we all know about how he went up and got the Ten Commandments. Well, when he was, went up there and given the Ten Commandments, Yahweh showed himself, okay, to Moses as the Word, Yahweh Elohim. Then he turned into a tab to the tabernacle pattern. Okay, now this is just, this pattern here is just a representation or a manifestation of that pattern. The pattern of the universe itself is Yahweh Elohim. He is the pattern. And as you keep coming back, you keep seeing it and seeing it. We'll keep proving it and proving it. So he turned into this tabernacle pattern to show that him and this tabernacle pattern were the same. Then he turns back into shape and form and then shows Moses the creation coming in according to this pattern. It's all bold, ain't it? <laughs> you know? But Yahweh, if you have a God, if you have a creator, then he ought to be able to prove himself that he really exists and he actually is. Not like when I was in Christianity, uh, just believe me, brother, I've been sent by God. Oh, you'll find out about those things when you're dead. Or, the one that got me the most, it's obvious to see that you don't have the Holy Spirit. They were right. I didn't. <laughs> they were right about that one. All right? So this tabernacle pattern was given to Moses. Now let's get it out of the Bible. Now then, what you would do on this, if somebody didn't believe in the Bible, you would say, okay, I'm going to show you the creation, but I'm going to show you that it's right in your own Bible to give you validity that this Bible knows exactly what it's talking about and it's accurate. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm, we're going to use the two in combination with each other to show you something about Yahweh. Read that, please. Okay, you want Exodus? Yes. Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. So he, see this isn't me, this isn't us saying that this is a pattern. Mm -hmm. This is right in your Bible. This is Moses, Yahweh telling Moses that this is a pattern. Alright, All right. Uh, read please. And, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Now you're going to make this as a pattern and even all the instruments that are within this, you see, this is part of that pattern. Okay, now you go down to, what is it, 40 or something like that? Let's see here. Yes, okay. yes, so this is Exodus 25 and 40. And look, that thou make them after their pattern. Romans, uh, or Which eight. was showed thee in the mount. Or 12, something like that. Where, where uh, Paul is talking about the pattern that was given to Moses on the mount. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm showing you that it's talking about, if you, this tabernacle pattern is talked about more in the Bible than anything else other than Yahshua himself. Because everything is pointing and talking about Yahshua. Was it Hebrews? Yeah. yeah, okay. So now we're going to Hebrews 8 and 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of Yahweh when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So here, this just to show you that it's in the Old Testament and it's in the New Testament that they're talking about this pattern. All right? Now then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to try to show you something about this pattern. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that this pattern uh, is, how you are constructed according to this pattern. Now in uh, Genesis 1 and 1, get that if you would please. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Maybe it's two and one before he created Adam. Oh, okay. Let me check. Let me get there. Okay. Uh, it might be three. He had to create the creation before he could create Adam, so. <clears throat> uh, okay. 26. You want to let us make man? Yes. Yeah. And what, what, where is that? What chapter? 1 and 26. Oh, 1 and 26. Okay. Genesis 1 and 26. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image, in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. So here it's saying that Yahweh created man in his image. So therefore, if this is the if he is the pattern of everything in the universe, then therefore that means he would create man, you see, by this same pattern. All right? Now then, the court the pattern was consisted of the court roundabout, the holy place, and the most holy holy place. One, two, three. You're consisted of your stomach your chest, and your head. One, two, three. You can't live without one of these. If somebody, you know, eliminates one of these, you're, you're dead. Your arms and your legs, I'll explain those. Now, they, you can live, of course, without your arms and your legs. You understand? But we'll get into that. But this, one, two, three. One, two, three. Your body, one, two, three, the tabernacle. Around this tabernacle, you had two layers of skin, okay, two layers of linen. Around your body, you have two layers of skin, your dermis and your epidermis. All right, they break down, just like everything breaks down, but two main layers, all right? It goes all the way around the tabernacle, just like you have two layers of skin. It's the largest organ in the body. It goes all the way around your body, okay? One, two, three. The next thing is your, we'll come to, okay, is the gate here, the wide gate as they call it. This would be the altar of sacrifice. All right. On this, if the children of Israel broke any of the commandments, it was punishable by death. So therefore, an animal or something would have to take it your place okay in order for you not to die it also burns grain and fruits and vegetables things like that as as offerings all right just like you eat and you eat meat and you eat vegetables some people are vegetarians but whatever it's still the same it doesn't matter what you eat something's got it something has to die they had to put a lamb or something whatever their sin called for on this it had to die in order for them to live just like you have to eat, whatever you eat has to die. I grew up on a little farm. We used to have to go out and kill the chickens and the cows and the pigs to eat from. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, just go to the market. They don't think about it, mm -hmm. you see. But something had to die in order for you to live. Now, this around this altar, okay, it was square in configuration. All right, there was a continuous fire that burned in there. And there was a grating system that they'd put the animals on. Also, they would have to take the blood of that animal and they'd have to put it on the four horns, you see, of the altar, okay? And then it would have sprinkled blood around that altar. Also, there was a scooped out receptacle here in the bottom that they would shovel out the ashes, all right? This corresponds in your body to your large intestines. You have your ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid, col sigmoid colon. All right. There is four corners where colic arteries take and bring the blood, and then there's, of course, vessels, or blood vessels, all around there taking the nutrients from the from the intestines, going up to the heart. But we'll get into that. Four points of blood. Okay. Within the center of it are your small intestines, which looks like a grating system. There was a continuous fire that had to be 
in this tabernacle right here. There is a continuous fire in your body. That's how come you have, they take your temperature to see, if, you know, what your temperature, if it's too low or too high. All right. There's a continuous burning in you, but there's a continuous burning here. And somebody will say, well, I'll, 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 I'll break that. Okay. I won't eat. Well, what your body does, it starts breaking you down or it starts taking the fat in your body and breaking it down. All right. You, it's, you're not going to, if you put this fire out, you're dead. You know, that's all there is to it. They had to have this fire. Square and configuration, like I said. The intestines here are like a grating system. Okay, I've got the, okay, got, and of course you have your own scooped out receptacle, if you will, okay, that you dump your ashes. Next thing we come to, what I like to call is a large bird bath, okay? <laughs> there was a large laver of water, and it was filled with water, all right? Now, Yahweh, we had to have a sacrifice down here. Yahweh provided a sacrifice down here. It was a lamb for a sacrifice. I'm just going to get a little bit of the book to show that this fits anything and every, it fits everything in the creation, including your Bible. All right? They had to come to the Red Sea, okay, after they ate that Passover lamb. Well, after they kill this lamb here, they would have to wash it, you see, in this laver right here. And then when you would take that bloody animal and you would put it in the water, it would turn red. Okay? It was made of brass, which is back at that time was like the looking glass that the women had, so they could look in there, you know, it's like they could see the reflection. Okay? So, large bird bath, you see a large body of water used for cleansing. Okay, thing that, the next thing you come to in your body are your kidneys. Your kidneys cleanse your blood. Okay, cleanse your body. All right, they are placed, when placed together, they're round in configuration, just like this is round in configuration. All right, this is for a cleansing, that's for a cleansing. Okay, let's see, am I forgetting anything? I think that's pretty much it. And these, the kidneys, are separated by five centimeters. The children of the Red Sea walk through there, through the Red Sea, through the parted waters of the Red Sea, five abreast. So you can see how these things, you know, and we can get into a lot, lot more. I'm just, I'm just going to be skimming the surface tonight. All right. We have doctors and nurses that can get into this body here and just, it's unbelievable. They can get into the, like the eye. Here a while back, a lady on the Zoom got in and broke down the eye, showed how it fit the tabernacle. Everything fits that tabernacle. I'm going to have to get me that water. Water will rust your stomach, but I drink it anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now then, the next thing we come to is this cup of holy anointing oil. This oil was pre, uh, poured over the priest's head to quicken him so that he could operate flawlessly within this pattern. This tabernacle pattern, the priest had to operate flawlessly just like within your body, everything has to operate flawlessly or you will get sick. All right, so it was a quickening so that he could operate flawlessly. Cupped. And it's, I've done the research, and it said, I, I saw it with my own eyes, cupped over your kidneys or your adrenal glands. It is for quickening you. It's like if, if, some, if a child or an animal or something runs out in front of your car, you will take and hit the brake. It, it, before you even had time to think, before it, you're hitting the brake. That's because it was a quickening, a shot of adrenaline. And then a lot of times you notice after that you're kind of set there to shake a little bit. That's from the effects of that adrenaline. So you have a quickening here for a life and death situation. You have a quickening here. And it was a life and death situation here. And there was a couple of priests that decided to do it their own way, and Yahweh killed them. Because this has to operate flawlessly. Just like in your body, it needs to operate flawlessly. Next thing we'd come to would be the most holy place. Separating the most holy place was a veil, okay? Blue, purple, and scarlet veil that separated the court roundabout from the holy place. 
and there was a door, about a three-foot door, that you could walk through here. This was the wide door, and this is the narrow gate. All right? Blue, purple, and scarlet. In your body, you have your diaphragm that separates your stomach cavity from your chest cavity. It is a large sheet of muscle, okay? And it is, it has arteries, it has veins, and it has capillaries. In your medical books, in your Tabor's Anatomy Dictionary, okay, it talks about that uh, arteries are red, veins are blue. The mixing of the two, the capillaries, that's purple. You have a blue, purple, and scarlet veil. This veil was separation here, and it would blow in the wind. Your diaphragm, that's what causes you to breathe. It blows in the wind, if you will, okay? Pushes the air out, lets the air in. Blue, purple, and scarlet. The next thing you come to, and this is the one that really gets me. They have really screwed this one up. <coughs> if you look at your candlesticks, the menorah, <coughs> it's usually nine. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But mankind's always gonna add or take away. <coughs> They just can't leave anything alone that Yahweh does. Right. So here's a seven branch candlestick. It had to be lit for light. Uh, it had to be lit so that there'd be light in the tabernacle here during the night and it would be extinguished during the day. You had one that was in the center and the other stemmed from it. So you just pour oil in one and it would fill them all. All right. This is your great, is just like your great aortic arch. Your great aortic arch has seven branches. It has one, the anonymous uh, cephalic, I think it's called? The brachial. Something like that. Brachial cephalic. Brachial cephalic, okay. Brachial cephalic, it's been a long time since I did this. <laughs> okay, that stands alone, okay? And you have three branches, okay? You have one branch, the first branch to the seventh, the second to the sixth, the, uh, the uh, third to the uh, fifth, and then you have the fourth one which stands alone by itself. And that's where you pour the oil in and it would fill. Yahshua came in on the 4,000th year, okay, and his spirit has been in all ages, okay? Had to be lit. Your great aortic arch. The, Joel brought this out years ago, years ago, I remember that the hole inside your arteries, just the hole, the nothingness, okay, is called the lumen, which means light. This, and they say that the flickering of the heart is like the flickering of a candle. So you have seven branches, one that stands alone. Seven branches, one that stands alone. The next thing we come to is the heart, okay, or the table of shoe bread. Now the table of shoe bread had 12 loaves of bread on it, knives and, fork, uh, knives and spoons, okay? And that's just where the priest would get, his would get his sustenance from. That's where he'd eat. This correlates to your heart. Now the ta table of shoe bread had two gold crowns that ran around it. Just like your heart has the coronary arteries that go around it. Coronary means crown. You have two gold crowns running around your heart. Now my daughter used to work in the operating room. She said she saw it many times. I used to butcher chickens and I used to see it on the chickens. So, you know, it's, I've never seen it on a human, so. <laughs> but two, you have two gold crowns, coronary arteries, see, that run around your heart, okay? The four chambers of your heart, okay, the four corners, okay? You have two, you have two. You get your sustenance from your heart. The heart pumps the sustenance or the nutrients from your stomach and your intestines up to the heart. This is like the dining room table, if you will, okay? And it distributes throughout. So you eat from the tables of your heart, all right? Like I said, I'm just gonna briefly explain this. The next thing we come to is the altar of incense. The altar of incense is where they burnt or incense, four main ingredients in the incense, and it was a sweet smelling savor unto Yahweh. There was four horns, okay, that they would put, place blood upon. Blaze, blood had to be placed all the way throughout this tabernacle. Man didn't know 
the blood circulated in the body until here just a, what about a hundred or so years ago mm -hmm. something like that right. you understand if you understood the pattern they were knowing that blood circulates in the body mm -hmm. you That's see cool. so that correlates to your lungs there's four main ingredients in your lung not counting all the pollutants that mankind is putting in it right okay only the high priest knew how to mix this incense here according to the art of the apothecary as they called it all right only Yahweh knows how to manufacture oxygen or air for us you understand four main ingredients now we know how to store it we know how to enrich in it we know how to do all kinds of things with it but we don't know how to make it and if we did know how to make it we better start making it you see only the plants and then we're destroying all the plants so therefore what can you say four main ingredients now then there is four main ingredients in Yahweh's name Y H W H we write from left to right here it is in Hebrew from left okay up here from left okay to right okay Yad Hey Vav Hey Y H W H four main ingredients Yahweh's name means he who causes to breathe that's just one of his you know definitions of his name and when you breathe now when I first came into class I used to kind of sit in the back and snicker just a little bit because they would say that you can hear people breathing that name and they'd go <sighs> well one day I was walking down the hospital walking in to see somebody don't even remember who I walked past this one door and there was a person breathing on a breathing machine in there and I heard him say <sighs> I believed it after that got a witness I'm telling you you know some you know sometimes you hear things and you go oh, okay I think they're exaggerating that in just a little bit you know mm -hmm. I found out they weren't so you breathe those four ingredients okay this is your breath of life okay just like here you see this this here you know showing forth you see you have a bronchial tree in your lungs here just like Yahweh you see showed Moses at the burning bush or a tree if you will you see and gave his name all these things I mean like I say I'm just touching it I'm just barely touching it there's so many things that you can get into here there's so many ways you can go and and branch off okay the next once again the next veil we come to now we've got it pictured up here like this but it actually goes across right here there was no door to get in there okay and it is blue purple and scarlet okay that would the separation between your chest and your head would be your neck unless you're a, as we used to say unless you're a Green Bay Packer you haven't got a lot of muscle in your neck so therefore we're going to have to find another way of showing forth you see blue purple and scarlet we have a main artery going up to your head you have a vein main vein coming down from the head that's your red and that's your and that's your blue but since like I said unless you got a big thick neck you haven't got a lot of capillaries there so Yahweh placed within your neck the thyroid gland all right now the thyroid gland to test for thyroid th th thyroxin you would have a purple spoke so once again you have purple placed now Yahweh could have placed that thyroid gland any place in your body it didn't have to be in your neck but you see there's a pattern going on here here we can find out even why you were constructed why your body was even constructed the way it was by just understanding and this is this is medical this is scientific stuff and it's showing forth Yahweh and his plan of there is no possible way that they knew anything about the body when that tabernacle pattern was given that's right you see they didn't know these things see today it's common knowledge for us <laughs> Now the next, like I said, and then the next thing you're going to come to is a three-in-one configuration. See the Ark of the Covenant. They're still looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a show the other day on t TV where this guy was running all over the place looking for the for the covenant. You know, looking for the Ark of the Covenant. But they never said one thing about the Bible. 
They never said one thing about how it was hidden you know, in a cave, you know, and, and, and nothing. But this guy was on a wild goose chase. He never did find it, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Trying to find this pattern. I, I knew he wasn't going to find it, but I just, I just had to watch the show just to see how funny it was going to be. <laughs> you know? So you come to a, the Ark of the Covenant. It's three in one in configuration. You have two archangels looking at themselves, uh, looking towards each other, witnessing to what's in the center, which would be Yahweh when he would appear there in the shape and form of a cloud. All right? The two witnesses looking forth over the the uh, Ark of the Covenant and underneath the Ark of the Covenant there one of the things you will find in there was the uh, Ten Commandments. Alright? Now this is going to correspond to your head cavity. In your head cavity you have your brain. You have the two hemispheres of your brain going up. They do not touch quite in the center. A fissure there in the center. It'd be, so you have one on the right, one on the left. The brain has two functions. Motor and sensory. You had Gabe Michael and you had Gabriel. Okay, Michael was the warrior, Gabriel was the messenger. So you have two functions. All right? Your brain is gray and white in, in consistence of its matter. Yahweh would, con, would appear in the, shape and form, in, the shape, in the shape and form of a cloud, which is gray and white in, ma in matter. Okay, Be below your sphenoid bone or the hard, you know, the. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of this uh, that they stood on. The mercy seat? Huh? Uh, the mercy seat? Yeah, it was a mercy seat. They're hard, okay, it was like a hard, another oh, word for hard body. Cellaturcica. Well, that's, that it, that's in your brain. Oh, okay. The cellaturcica. That, that I remembered. I couldn't remember that. But anyhow, you have, they're standing on this platform, <laughs> hard platform, okay? So in your brain, you have your, you know, you have your cellaturcica. <laughs> Silaturgic. Silaturgic. Okay. Silaturgic. Yeah, we got it. They have that thing there, yep. and below that, okay, you have your your thigh, uh, your uh, phenoid, your pituitary. No, not your pituitary. Just yeah, your pituitary. That's it. Your pituitary. Boy, boy, oh boy. I, I see. I still don't know it. <laughs> so you have your pituitary gland. Now your pituitary gland is the master law of your body. Just like these Ten Commandments here was the master law of Israel. All right? When I first came into class, they didn't know that there was ten hormones that the pituitary gland put out. But we preached that it was. That there was ten hormones there. Because we knew that it had to fit the pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, they have found that, yes, there are ten in there. Mm -hmm. You understand? But even before... They knew it. We knew it. Because we knew that this pattern was infallible. And we could see how this pattern fits so many things. So therefore, ten, com ten commandments, the master gl gland, the master gland. So, get me uh, uh, Ephesians, I think it is. Mm. No, you're not. That your body. Oh, uh, first, first, Thessalonians. first Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Okay. Yeah, yeah. First Corinthians. Six. I never did remember scriptures very well, but now I'm getting older. It's even oh. worse. But I can blame it on old age Whoa. now. So. We'll help you. But that's why we have readers. Is because everybody has a talent. Everybody has a gift. Every, it's a little bit different, but that's that's why it's a body. So we're in First Corinthians six and nineteen. Mm -hmm. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now here, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now people think that you have to go to church to go to the temple of God. You understand? But your body is the temple. Mm -hmm. Just like Yahweh dwelt in this tabernacle back here, what does that show you? That Yahweh dwells in your body here. Okay? Read. What... Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and you are not your own? You're not even your own. I know we were all brought up to think that we, it's us, it's me, you understand? Mm -hmm. But you're not your own, you see. You are Yahweh's. And once you understand that, and once you get it, you're going to be relieved. You understand? Mm -hmm. Read. For you are bought with a price. You're bought with a price. He died on this cross 
for you. All right? You were bought with a price to have life, eternal life. Okay? Therefore, therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body. And not out spirit. here. Not like this. Not like this. Not like this. You understand? In your body. And in your spirit. And in your spirit. Which are Yahweh's. Which are Yahweh's, but most people don't even understand what spirit is, much less. When Reagan, when the challenger was going up in the in the sky and it blew up. Now if you a lot of you people in class know this, but when it blew up, it blew up in a Y. One part went that way, one part went the and you could see a perfect Y. They asked Reagan, why are we going into outer space? What are we doing this for? And he said, so we could see the face of God. Well, you don't have to go in outer space to see the face of Yahweh. You see, He's right within you. You understand? And when you come down here to these classes, it's being explained to you. It's being shown to you. You see? And therefore, you can start seeing the face of Yahweh in the Spirit. Because here, the difference between us and the rest of the world out here, you see, is we are worshiping Yahweh in spirit and in truth. We're not worshiping Him, you see, physically. Doing physical things. Doing physical rituals. Doing physical. Because, as it's going to be explained to you in lectures to come, you see, Yahshua came in and fulfilled what was written in the Old Testament. And this Old Testament, and all of these things that were written in this Old Testament, was trying to point out and explain Him. Now you're going to read chapter after chapter after chapter in the Old Testament, you see, about this tabernacle pattern, and so on and so forth, and how important it was. This was so important that Yahweh gave it to Moses, and then the people, the two men that Yahweh gave him for the, to construct that tabernacle, he put his spirit within them so that there would be no mistake. Because there could be no, like I said, there was two priests that went in here, they offered strange incense, and he killed them. Just like here, if something happened to your incense or to your air, you see, it can kill you. It's the same principles going forth, back and forth, you see. So, now, there's a lot of things that we can get into off of this tabernacle pattern now. Now, here a while back, they were getting into that there was a death, there was a burial, and then there was a resur resurrection. Here you had a death, they buried, killing of the lamb, buried it here, and then they'd pour, the high priest would pour the oil on his head. It was a type of resurrection or lifting. So you have death, burial, resurrection. You had blood. Blood was poured here. Okay, you have water. You have the water here. You see, blood, water, oil. You find that oil is a type of, of spirit. Now, let's go over here to the cell. Like I said, I didn't know none of this stuff before I came in here. I had no interest, absolutely no interest in it. You understand? A cell. It is three. You have the, the cell body, the nucleus, and the nucleolus. One, two, three. Okay? You have the mitochondria down here. That's where the burning takes place. It's like that altar where there was a burning that took place. This is where it breaks down, okay, the, the nutrients that the cell gets. You have water vacuoles, okay? You have, you have oil vacuoles, just like the holy anointing oil. It's all going according. You see, you have the, like I say, the court roundabout, the, the, the holy place, and the most holy place. All right? The DNA, you see, this is a, like a neutral zone. This is like a neutral zone. This is where the priest would go and offer a prayer unto Yahweh. And the incense was a sweet smelling savor. Because remember, there was stench down here of death. So here, you see, you had the incense. So over here, you see, you have. Uh, the RNA and the, D, the DNA and the RNA. Now the DNA gives the RNA, you see the pattern, and it brings it down into the, into the body. You have Yahweh, you see, 
the pattern okay he is the pattern and then he brings it down into the creation you see just like you have right here it's 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 just so neat now you have the atom the atom has an electron a neutron and a proton okay one two three the electron is negative or is uh, is uh, negative okay negative charge because that would be like the court roundabout here like the altar here there was death so it'd be negative you have the neutron neutron neutral or it's neutral okay just like this was an intercessory or it was neutral all right you have the proton okay which has a positive charge okay that is like in the most holy place because that's where Yahweh dwelt okay and would appear up here in the wings of uh, between the wings of the archangel all right that's positive so you can see how you've got the cell the atom you know we can break all these things down you see and show forth one two three death burial resurrection blood water spirit Okay, let's go over here. Now, a lot of these have already been brought out before, but it's always good to hear it again. Okay, you had Adam. He was told not to take, partake of that fruit, and he partake of that fruit anyhow. Okay, that was a death. He died in his conscience. In other words, he was buried. His consciousness was buried. He was buried in his conscience. You have a death. You have a burial. Okay? And they resurrected or came out of the garden and they were to be, they were to be resurrected or made alive by, by the woman and childbearing. Okay? Death, burial, resurrection, blood, blood, water, spirit. Noah. Noah was given charge to preach to the world that there was going to be a flood and that the world was going to end kind of like some people I know of right now saying that the world's going to end he preached for a hundred and twenty years can you imagine that a hundred and twenty years yeah. oh it's been going on this long it ain't gonna end you guys are crazy you know death he said or he put the blood on their head in other words it talks in the in the prophets that if you to preach it's like a watchman if a watchman sees somebody come and sees the enemy coming and they don't tell anybody it's on his head if he warns the people the blood is on their head you see that's in the law here Noah was preaching to the people putting the blood on their head now it took him 120 years to build that ark he had to have help building that ark kind of like class if you will 120 years the people got tired thinking that it was never going to happen don't get tired don't think it's not going to happen right because I guarantee you one thing if the creation don't go out you will we all die mm -hmm. you know gotta hang in here folks this is a lesson back here a hundred and twenty years he preached Yahweh told him that him and his family would be saved he didn't have any kids yet yeah. you see Yah you think Yahweh doesn't know what's gonna happen you think Yahweh is not in control you see that's basically what I was taught you see when I did go to Sunday school you know that that boy Yahweh just you know he's Adam ate of that fruit oh boy it messed things up and you know and oh golly now he had to take and oh he had to do all kinds of things you know and all that it's like I had a Jehovah Witness one time tell me that that Yahweh or as he said Jehovah did not know that Adam was going to sin I said, wow, that's pretty good. I said, that really shook things up, huh? And he goes, yeah, it did. <laughs> you know? I said, well, let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. Let's say that I become a Jehovah Witness and I go to heaven. How do I know that man ain't going to screw it up again? If Yahweh doesn't have any control, you understand, 
then how do I know, how can I trust if I go to heaven that somebody ain't going to screw it up again? You see, is Yahweh is in control. There's just no, no way around it. He is in control. Preached for 120 years. The water came. You know, death. You see, burial. They were buried in the water. They were buried in... Pharaoh and his host was buried in the water. You find that back here in the Old Testament, any time water was involved, there was somebody got... So there was death. You see, death. In other words, I was told when I got baptized that... I, you know, I would be that I was going to be alive. You know, it was going to make me alive. It was going to, I could then I could receive the Holy Spirit. Well, I I look back in the Old Testament all the way down, which is where they're getting the idea of baptism from, and the people that got wet always died. You understand? Mm -hmm. But see, we still are being baptized. We are still being immersed in the knowledge and understanding and in the words of Yahshua. And Yahshua said his words were living water. You understand? There, it depends on, I'm not going to go, but it just depends on what age you're in, you see, as to what's, what's right at this time. Back here, physical. After the cross and after Pentecost, after the pouring out of that Holy Spirit, then it becomes spiritual. It's not the same worship. The same principle but different manifestation if you will okay preached there was going to be end of the world the floods came okay they rose they rose above the water the people that were in the water they died you have a death they were buried in that water the ark resurrected you see and this the angel of Yahweh closed that door okay to that ark once Yahweh closes that door you understand? Once Yahweh closes the door, it's over. It's done. And what we're hoping, what we're doing down here, is we're hoping that we can get that last person, that last person in the class, see, so that Yahweh can take this thing out. Mm -hmm. It's like I said a, a few weeks ago. You know, I'm glad that he didn't take it out in 1960. Because if he had taken it out in 1960, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Right. You see? So I'm waiting and hoping for that last person to come into this class. Get that last one in here so that Yahweh can close it out. Because I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to see anybody get lost. Right. But this is Yahweh's plan and this is His purpose. So you have a death, you have a burial, you have a resurrection, you have blood, you have the water, and you have the Spirit. So all these stories here, you see. Now I just gave you a brief overview of everything and uh, the next speakers can get into it in probably great depth and uh, hopefully, hopefully you got a little something out of that. I know that when I heard this tabernacle when I first came in, it was one of those things that really made it solid for me to think, yes, this is the truth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can't find the dead burn thing. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker will be Dr. Miguel Safana. I didn't do it this time. I'm in the last class. <laughs> <laughs> Well, surprise, surprise. Uh, I'm always happy to be here and, and, and happy to testify of the things um, that was revealed by way of vision. Um, and we wouldn't have known any of this stuff, like Chuck said, about the body and everything. We wouldn't have known about any of this according to the tabernacle pattern. You read about this tabernacle pattern, and you start reading about it in Exodus, 
about all the the vessels and stuff you uh, i'm gonna skip over this right next is the 25th chapter 26 they still going into that tabernacle i'm gonna skip over that <laughs> but when you start really understanding like the the depths of this pattern and how it truly how truly yahweh elohim is the archetype original pattern of the universe and we what and like chuck said what we mean when we say we say absolutely nothing escapes this pattern and he just showed you how your body is made according to this pattern and yahweh had to set it up that way and our founder used to say that Yahweh didn't need the Bible. He said the creation is Yahweh's Bible because the creation is what proves its existence. And that's what we read about in Psalms. If we could just start back in Psalms. Psalms 19 and 1. Uh huh. The heavens declare the glory of Yahweh. And the firmament shows his handiwork. Mm -hmm. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. Now day unto day the creation utters speech, and night unto night it shows knowledge. Everything that we're looking at has a meaning, has a has a purpose. We 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 come into this class, you know, we've been watching that sun all our lives, and we didn't understand what, what that sun was point, pointing to. You're just looking at it, wow, look at the, the beautiful sunrise and sunset. But you didn't know the, the, the interest you didn't know the intricacies of the sunrise and sunset. You didn't know why the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. You see, but we have a pattern to go by. So we can understand why the sun rises in the east and why the sun sets in the west. We can understand why when you see the sun rise, you have those blue, purple, and scarlet colors, and then when you see it set, you have those blue, purple and scarlet colors because we have this tabernacle here and we have it laid out here and we have Yahshua who was of the tribe of Judah and Judah was on the east side of the tabernacle this was the west side of the tabernacle this was the north side of the tabernacle and this was the south side of the tabernacle so this high priest he'd have to enter in at the straight gate didn't he say enter in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and straight is the way so the high priest he had to enter in at the gate here this is on the east side of the tabernacle the high priest is representing the son of Yahweh officiating in the greater and more perfect tabernacle. I don't think it says that in Hebrews. Yeah, it does. If we can grab that really quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. This pattern is so deep, and when you when you see and we teach things, and Chuck started getting into it like blood, water, spirit, and, and death, burial, resurrection. And you know people say well you guys it's just blood water spirit death burial resurrection it's deeper than that yeah. and the principles behind blood water spirit death burial resurrection it goes way deeper than that but you have to see the correlations of the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the water the water the water the spirit the spirit you have to see the correlations in order to understand oh Yahweh is real this is not just a coincidence of everything that's happening that he actually has a, a purpose and a plan that's operating through the ages and dispensation and absolutely nothing is escaping his purpose it's going exactly the way he purposed it, right in the cloud, right way back here. It's going exactly, and he can't take anything back. After he, Yahweh Elohim, after Yahweh took on this shape and form and declared, he said, the, the word went forth and it will not return unto me void. Right. He couldn't take a thing back after that. Can, mm -hmm. Do you have yeah, that scripture? Hebrews 9 and 11. Uh -huh. But the Messiah being come a high priest of good things to come. Now the Messiah being come a high priest of good things to come. Read. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Read. Not made with hands. Not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Mm -hmm. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. Having obtained now see you reading this you don't know anything about the tabernacle you say holy place mm -hmm. 
You wouldn't, you wouldn't know what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know that this high priest had to enter in once a year into this most holy place on the Day of Atonement to make atonement just like he made atonement for our sins. So this high priest, he's operating in this tabernacle and this tabernacle, this is the see this is the greater and more perfect tabernacle. So that's why you see the children of Israel, you see them going by this pattern cuz the universe is the greater and more perfect tabernacle. So we're taking this sun, see Judah was on the east side of this tabernacle, Yahshua the Messiah, he came from the tribe of Judah. This high priest is representing the sun. So as the, the high priest, as he's going into this tabernacle and as he's entering through these veils, and you have the blue, purple, and scarlet, that's the sun, or the high priest, that's the sun rising as he's going through those veils. And that's why you see when the sun rises in the east, that blue, purple, and scarlet. Mm -hmm. And then as it sets in the west, so now after the high priest, after he goes into this most holy place, just once a year on the Day of Atonement, and then when he comes back down, and this was a, da this was a daily thing that he had to do. A daily offering. They had to offer up sacrifices and everything. Don't you eat every day? Mm-hmm. So this had to be a daily operation. And so as he's going, going in in the east, the sun's rising, or the high priest is, is, is rising in that tabernacle. Don't we say this is a death, burial, resurrection? And then as he's coming down, it's the same thing. He's going back down through these veils, but this time he's coming from the west side. So as the sun has to set on the west side, or has to set in the west, and as it's going down, you see those same colors, that blue, purple, and scarlet. And then sometimes you even see the, the, the colors, the blue, purple, and scarlet. Sometimes you even see uh, the, the whole spectrum of the rainbow. You'll see the whole spectrum, and he had this, these garments of beauty and glory, mm -hmm. and he had to put on these garments of beauty and glory before he went into the most holy place. And so you, you have these veils, and this representing the whole spectrum. And did you know, they call it in the King James Version, Holy Ghost. Did you know ghost means spectrum? Mm -hmm. And see, Yahweh Elohim, he is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, it's just, and, and you just see all these colors. You see all these colors here. When Adam, when he was placed into this garden, see, the, the, the trees was already in fruition. That means they already had fruit on them. They were already at its, at its peak. So you had all these fruits on these trees. And you see how Adam, you see he's surrounded by that rainbow. He's surrounded by many colors in this most holy place. And then don't you see this rainbow here? And that rainbow was a sign that was given to Noah that he wouldn't, he wouldn't bring a, a, the flood of, of waters anymore. So you see the, the, this rainbow here. And then you see on, in Solomon's temple, see, it was for everybody. The, the, Jews, the Jews had a place. The Gentiles had a place. They even had a court for the woman. So you had those out of, out of one blood came all nations representing all those colors. And then this high priest, I showed you, he had that coat of pretty much a coat of many colors as Joseph was given that coat of many colors. And Joseph was given that coat of many colors. I didn't even mean to get into this. But Joseph was given, given the coat of many colors in Canaan's land. Because the high priest... He, when he put on this, this, this garments of beauty and glory, see, it was in the most holy place. Mm -hmm. I mean, this tabernacle, it lines up with everything. Mm -hmm. And then down here, since we're talking about the greater and more perfect tabernacle, you have Chuck was getting into this uh, altar of sin sacrifice. See, this is representing the earth. And from the... Oh, man.
So you have the most holy place, the holy place, you have the court roundabout. Now in this court roundabout, you had that altar of sin sacrifice. And you had this grading system with the altar of sin sacrifice. Now, we talk about this death, burial, and resurrection. And Yahshua, he went into his ministry. How old was he when he went into his ministry? 30. 30 years old. How old would a high priest have to be when they went into their ministry? 30. 30 years old. Now, Yahshua, he's the true high priest, as she was just reading about, operating in the greater and more perfect tabernacle. And this gate here, how wide was this gate? This gate was 30 feet wide. How wide was this door here? Three, Three feet. This gate was 30 feet wide. This door here was three feet wide. What age did Yahshua die on the cross? 33. 33. 33. So at 30 plus 3, that would be 33. So at 33, you have your death, you have your burial, and you have your resurrection at 33. I'm talking about everything going by the pattern, how he's operating by this pattern. And then we talked about this, this grading system. See, the earth, first of all, this altar of sin sacrifice, it was 23 and a third feet from this gate here. So to get to the center of the altar, that would be 23 and a third, and approximately a third feet to get to this altar of sin sacrifice. Now, what is the tilt of the earth? When the, the earth is tilted on the axis, is 23 and a third. This altar of sin sacrifice is representing the earth. That's why Chuck talked about that continual burning that had to be on this altar of sin sacrifice. And don't you have the core of the earth? It's a continual burning. And then you have these, these great, this grading system on the, the altar of sin sacrifice. And doesn't the earth have latitude and longitude lines? Mm -hmm. And then you have this, this, this labor of water here. And then the earth is surrounded by water. I'm talking about everything going by a pattern. Then you have the, the land. You have the air. And you have the water. Representing that law. And Yahweh, He is spirit law. And I'm to everything. So then you have, in this court roundabout, from this gate... To this door here, it was 70 feet. How many children of Israel, how many children of Israel went down into Egypt? 70. 70 souls went down into Egypt. Now isn't this the court roundabout? So we have the, we see this thing going by a pattern. And then you see it repeated. And it's not only back here with the children of Israel, because we say to the law and to the prophets, how many years were they in bondage? Seventy years unto Babylon. So, you, so now you start seeing the, these, these cycles, and you start seeing everything repeat itself and just repeat over and over and over again. From this gate to that seven branch lampstand and I'm drawing poor art here and there's so much you can do with these calculations so from if the from the gate to the door was 70 feet the door to the seven branch lampstand see this was 10 feet it would this was 10 feet to the seven branch lampstand and the table of shoe bread 10 feet to the altar of incense and then 10 feet to that second veil, making this 30 feet. And this was 15 feet high. Oh, there's, I really didn't mean to get into all this, but I'm trying to make it simple so it can be easily understood. Mm -hmm. So this door was three feet wide. And we say it all the time, but how do we prove that the door was three feet wide? So this door,
So this will be the three feet wide. Now the height, the full height of this, you see this first veil here, the full height from here to the top of the first veil would be 15 feet. So from here all the way to here would be 15 feet. And then it was 15 feet across here as well. 15 feet wide. But this veil, see, was wrapped over. You know how you wrap it when you wrap a, when back when you were in church, when you wrapped a Christmas <laughs> present. Yeah. <laughs> and you know how some some the some of the Christmas the the um, the wrapping was a little bit more than what the present was, so you'd have to wrap it over. Uh -huh. So that's how this this veil went over this 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 part of the um, the holy place. So you had to kind of wrap it over and they had to fold it over. So this was six feet folded over here. It was six feet folded on top. And then you had six feet folded on this side here. That's how you get, because when you minus uh, 15 minus six, you get the, the height here. This will be nine feet. Then you have 6 and 6, that's 12. And if this is 15 feet wide here, 15 minus 12 is how many feet? 3 feet, mm -hmm. right? And then we have steps in this, this, this tabernacle. There's 7 steps in this tabernacle. You have the gate is the first step. You have the altar is the second step. You have this laver is the third step. And you have the door here being the fourth step. The whole holy place is the fifth step. This second veil here is the sixth step. And the most holy place is the seventh step. Seven steps in the pattern. So you have seven days in the week. You have seven trumpets, seven angels, seven vows. You, you start getting all these sevens. It's a week of weeks, a week, seven weeks of ages. There's seven ages and seven dispensations. Seven is perfection in Jewish um, theology. So now you have these seven steps to this tabernacle pattern and the door is the fourth step. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. The door is the fourth step of this pattern. Mm -hmm. So when Chuck said Yahshua came in on the 4,000th year, I can erase this. When Yahshua came in, does this work? Yeah, it works. Where'd I put the black? 4,000 years. He you get me 2 Peter 3 and 8? Second Peter 3 and 8. Mm -hmm. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, mm -hmm. that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years. Now, don't be ignorant of this one thing, that one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So one day equals a thousand years. And a thousand years equals one day. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. Or is Yahweh okay? is not slack concerning uh -huh. His promise, mm -hmm. as some men count slackness. Now, Yahweh's not slack concerning. So Yahweh always fulfills His promise. And He's consistent with what He does. That's how you know He's going to fulfill His promise. Because He's done it before. He told Noah about the flood. He fulfilled that. He told, he told Abraham and gave him His promise that He would bless all nations. And what did he do? He blessed all nations. He poured out his Holy Spirit on the Jews first and then the Gentiles seven years later. There's another seven. So now he's, he's fulfilled that promise because all nations had an opportunity to receive that Holy Spirit. Continue, uh, continue reading. As some men count slackness, uh -huh. but is long-suffering. Now Yahweh's long-suffering. Read. Not willing that any should perish. Now he's not willing that any should perish. 
But that all should come to repentance. That all should come to repentance. Read. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Now we're talking about this day of Yahweh. That's what we abide in. You see this fiery cloud all around the edges of this chart? We tell you that the whole entire universe abides within, the, in, within pure spirit or within Yahweh. We're in this day of Yahweh and we've never got outside of it. But to some, it will come as a thief in the night because all this matter that you see is one manifestation of Yahweh or another. All that matter is, they say it's something that occupies space and uh, it has mass and occupies space. That's what the scientists tell you and that's what they teach you in school. Matter is something that occupies space and uh, has weight or has mass. Mm -hmm. What matter truly is, when you truly understand, matter is spirit materialized. That's what matter is. It's this spirit, because Yahweh, we say He is the source, the substance, He's the limits, and He's the bounds of everything. So Yahweh, what He did, He took on this shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, and then He used His substance to create the creation. So everything came from spirit and yet abides within spirit. Yahweh is, that's why you can say Yahweh is the all in all, because Yahweh is all that existed. And then he took on his shape and form because he wanted us to understand something about him. Because we can't understand wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, just, we can't understand that unless we see it manifested. You can't understand wisdom or intelligence, but when you look at those brilliant guys like Einstein, we see a manifestation of intelligence. We see a manifestation of that brilliance and that wisdom. We see a manifestation of beauty. We see, we see it every day. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing beauty just watching Amber be pregnant and watching a child that we both came together to make, I mean, that's just the beauty of it. And even that childbirth is going by the pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same way that you were born physically is the same way that you're born spiritually. That water, that child comes in by blood, water, spirit, 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. That's how you're born spiritually. The preaching of the gospel, laying the blood on your head. And then you're baptized or buried or immersed in this gospel, not in water. There's no more physical water. Baptism is out. And it was never in for any Gentile to keep. And then that spirit. And you become sealed with the Holy Spirit. And then you start to notice a change. Oh, that sun out in the sky. Look at the, look at the, the wise on those trees. Look at the wise in, in your veins. You start to notice your breath. Sometimes you're just not even doing nothing. You just... <sighs> that He be not far from every one of us. For in Him we live, move, and have our being. You didn't know how close you were to Yahweh. And really, when you come to the reality of it, there is nothing for else for you to be but Yahweh. But you have to come to that consciousness. You have to come to that consciousness. And no, you're not the creator of the universe. I'm not saying that. But you can become one. That was Yahshua's prayer in the garden. Make Father, make them one as you and I are one. He was one with His Father. He knew the whole purpose of Yahweh. And that's, what, that's what, how we, we're qualified to teach anything to you. It has to be Yahweh doing the teaching. Yahweh through Yahshua. That's who's doing the teaching. And everything operates by this name Yahweh. He talks about he talked about what the, the meaning of the name Yahweh. It's he who exists, because Yahweh, he is he is existence. He who exists, he was alone and by himself. He who exists and he who causes to exist. He caused you and I to exist. And that's why when you're born, you have to take on that breath of life, breathing in. And if you don't, you're still born. You're dead. You didn't, you didn't take on that breath of life. And Yahweh's name is the whole operation of the universe. His name is literally the heartbeat to the universe. That's why every time you're walking, it's Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. 
It was raining today. My windshield wipers was going, Yahweh, Yahweh, <laughs> Yahweh. You go out by the beach, you hear the waves, Yahweh, Yahweh. That's what you hear. The birds, you see the birds slapping their wings, Yahweh, Yahweh. And you see those birds, they're free. They can see, they see in all, everything that we're seeing. Look at, look at the bird's eye view. They see in all over, and, and, and then they operate by spirit law. The fish operate by spirit law. Everything operates by spirit law. That's why Noah didn't have to say, hey, come on, giraffes, get into the ark. Come on, elephants, get into the ark. They knew. Animals know. And they just migrated right into this ark. Noah didn't have to call for the animals. They just migrated by spirit law. Like this great migration coming out of here. They brought animals with them and everything. Mm -hmm. It's a great migration. It's your soul migrating from this death-like state unto life. That's the true migration. You're going according to this pattern. When you really look at it, now, where was I? I'm 4,000 years. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. He said, be not ignorant of this one thing. Don't be ignorant of this. Mm -hmm. Because Yahshua the Messiah, Chuck said it, he came on the 4,000th year. Well, let's look back at this sun in the sky was placed on the fourth day. Of Moses' vision. And we understand that Moses, can you get Exodus the 24th chapter? Where do you want to, where do you want to go in there? Uh, you can start at 9 and 10 and then just jump down. Exodus 24 mm -hmm. and 9. Then what up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, uh -huh. and 70 of the elders of Israel. Uh-huh. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. You have 70 elders, another seven. I mean, it's just... And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Read. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Now, there's, there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. This is Yahweh Elohim standing on the earth. And when you look at those pictures of the earth from space, it just looks like a blue sapphire stone. Because a sapphire stone is blue. That's what it looks like. Because you see all the, the earth is over 75% water. So when you look at it from space, it's just a, a, a blue sapphire stone. So they're seeing Yahweh Elohim. See, he has shown he has dominion over the earth. Continue reading. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So now he had feet. He had a body. Uh-huh. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. And, and he said, upon, uh, can you go back a, ver back a verse? Uh-huh. Uh, upon the nobles or go up one Go up, up one more. Yep. Ten. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, mm -hmm. and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a, a sapphire, sapphire stone, stone. Mm -hmm. and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, is the body of heaven in his clearness, just meaning that this was a bright, brilliant body radiant with light that's what it was because in the fulfillment see you have Moses Aaron Nadab and Abihu see Aaron he was the elder Nadab and Abihu those two were brothers so when Yahshua fulfills it you have he takes Peter James and John up into a high mount and he transfigures before them and they said his brightness outshined the noonday sun. That's what it means by this body was, it was a body of heaven in its clearness. This body was so bright that he had to even tone himself down to even appear unto Moses. And if you read that panoramic vision pamphlet, he talks about that. That they couldn't, they couldn't withstand that energy or that great spirit embodiment that Yahweh Elohim was. So he had to dim himself down in order to appear unto them. And so he had feet, hands, and a body because he said, Upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hands. Continue reading. Okay, that was 11. And upon mm -hmm. the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Uh -huh. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Now, they saw Elohim. See, he had a whole body. See, he, he took on shape and form as a man. He knew he was going to create mankind. So he had to appear unto them with something that they're familiar with. 
Moses is familiar with a man. He's interacting men all day, men and women. He's familiar with that. So Yahweh Elohim, he had to take in shape and form as a man because he knew he was going to create creatures in his likeness and his image. Now, if he appeared unto Moses as a uh, talking bird, Moses would be like, huh? <laughs> what is this? You know what I'm saying? Right. He had to appear unto him as what something Moses that he could recognize, something that he can relate to. Just Moses talking face to face with the Creator. And that's, a, that's just a great mystery. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he played nay, not his hands, and they did eat and drink. That means they brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> their lunchbox, all up into the mountain. No, he's talking spiritually. They spiritually ate and drank. It's a spiritual communion. It's no longer this, this, these ceremonies back there. It's no longer that. It was always spiritual. He, we just had to catch up to Yahweh Elohim. Continue reading. And Yahweh said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone uh -huh. and the law and commandments which I have written, mm -hmm. that thou mayest teach them. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. See, Moses, he was, if you read the first chapter, the uh, first verse of Exodus, the 24th chapter, he told Moses, alone and by himself, you come up into this mount. Alone and by, why alone and by himself Moses up into this mountain? Because if you take this mountain, see you have the top of this mountain, this would be as the most holy place. You have this plateau where they were, that was as the holy place. Then you had the, the base of the mountain, then you have, that would be as the court roundabout. So the, this high priest, he went up here with him and the two low priests. No. No, and he went into the most holy place alone and by himself. So Moses, this the top of the mountain representing the most holy place, he had to be alone and by himself. And then you read up, and his minister Joshua went up with him. What, Joshua, what are you doing up here? These are mysteries that you just re just read over. Yeah. And we don't have time to get into all that, but. You got to keep coming back. Continue reading. <laughs> and Moses went up into the Mount of Elohim. Uh huh. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. Uh huh. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Now he told the elders to tarry here. See, and they didn't tarry. Continue reading. Like we tell people to tarry in this class, you know, just give it, a, just give it a chance, give it a fair shot. We tell you to tarry here, and then they'd be like, ah, oh, nah, I have just one class, and they're done. <laughs> you think you can learn all about Yahweh in one class, or two, or two or three? People are coming out of 40 years and still learning. Right. You know, just get. I tell people, just give it, just come on, just give it a fair shot. You know, you can't expect to, to, to go to a mosque or go to a synagogue and think you know all about Judaism or all about Islam. No, do, do you got to do some research, do your homework. But he told them to tarry here. And when they didn't tarry, see, they got in trouble. They built this golden calf, corruption. Mm -hmm. They built this golden calf after they saw Yahweh Elohim. And he's, uh, he, he's a feet, hands, and a body. And sometimes how they, they built a four-legged a four beast. Just showing what was in them. And what they brought out of Egypt. They didn't bring, they, they, they didn't leave all their concepts. We tell you, when you come into class, leave all that garbage. Leave everything that you learn outside the door. Don't bring it in here. But see, they brought it in, they brought it into class, so to speak. They brought it in here because it's the same thing that's happening back here. It's the same thing that's going on in classes. Because we tell people to gather. They had to gather around this mount. And guess who was the speaker? Yahweh Elohim. That's right. And that's what we say the speaker's down here. It's the Holy Spirit speaking. And this is the congregation or the assembly. That's who he's speaking for. This is, people say, I'm going to church on Sunday. If you knew what the church was, you wouldn't be going to church. You should already be in church. You should be a part of the church wherever you go. Because the true church is his body. So this was the first congregation or assembly or the first church back here when he gathered them around Mount Sinai and he was the speaker. Right. Continue reading. If any man have any matters to do... I promise I'm getting them. to this 4,000. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and Moses went up into the mount and uh -huh. a cloud covered the mount. Now this, this is a key 
point. Moses went up into this mount, and the cloud covered the mount, read. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. Now this cloud covered this mount six days. Now what's the punctuation after that? It's a colon. There's a colon there. Mm -hmm. Then read on. And the seventh day. And the seventh day. What happened during the six days? Right. Now when you have a colon, you should have a definition or an explanation of what happened after, after the colon. Mm -hmm. So you have the cloud covering the mount six days. See, Moses doesn't put what happened during those six days in Exodus. See, Moses took that part that he's seeing during the six days and he put it in Genesis. And that's why we say the Exodus is before the Genesis because you have to have the Exodus first. And that's a lot to explain. But you have to have the Exodus first before you have the Genesis. They had to have this Exodus coming out of Egypt before, they had, before Moses sees this vision or the Genesis come in. He had to take on shape and form out of pure spirit, or this is an exodus, out of pure spirit before he creates anything or before we have a beginning of the, or the Genesis. But see, Moses, those six days, he took that and he put it in Genesis. Now you have in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the, and the earth. In the beginning of what? Moses' vision on top of Mount Sinai. It's not the beginning of the creation. Yahweh Elohim, He is the beginning of the creation. So in the beginning, Elohim created the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's what you have. And you have these days of the creation going right by the pattern. This will be as that darkness. Or death. The earth is in a death-like state. There's no life on it yet. Can you get Genesis? Genesis right one? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want her to read it and then I'll just stick it in? Yeah, you, you, you can read it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Read it. Now before you get that, can you get Revelations 10 and 4? Yeah. Okay. Because now look, Moses... In John, on the Isle of Patmos, they're seeing the same thing. Just like these two archangels here in this pattern, they're testifying to the same thing. They're both seeing Yahweh Elohim appear in this cloud here. They're both testifying unto it. Mm -hmm. Like I said the other class, just like your two eyes, they're testifying unto the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we say all the time, well, Yahweh Elohim, He took on shape and form, and then transfigured into this tabernacle and then back into himself before creating the creation. Now, where you read that in the Bible? Where you read that in Genesis or Exodus? You don't find it there. But John, since he's confirming the thing, see, he sees this and he sees as in Yahshua. He was as the, uh, in the midst of the seven branch lampstand. And his hairs were white like wool. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right. And his voice was as of many waters. See, he's seeing the reality of Yahshua being this tabernacle. And he's seeing it. And John is confirming exactly what Moses wrote. Mm -hmm. One and the same. That's why Moses, he wrote how many books? Five, Five books. How many books did John write? Five. Five books. How many fingers you got on this side? Five. How many fingers you got on this side? Five. 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 You tell him, Xavier. <laughs> Just five, five, five. Ten and four. Start at four. Mm -hmm. Revelation 10 and four. Mm -hmm. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders... Start at 10 and 1. Yeah. Revelation 10, 1. Uh -huh. And I saw another mighty angel uh -huh. come down from heaven, mm -hmm. clothed with a cloud, mm -hmm. and a rainbow was upon his head. And a rainbow was upon his what? Head. His head. Isn't that the most holy place? Read. And his face was as it were the sun, mm -hmm. and his feet as pillars of fire. Uh-huh. Read. 
And he had in his hand a little book open. Uh -huh. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Now, wasn't John, he was in the Aegean what? Sea. sea. So now John was in the Aegean Sea. He set his right foot upon the sea. Read. And, uh, and had his left foot on the earth. And the left foot on the earth. Moses, he was on the earth on top of Mount Sinai. So you have this left foot on the earth, his right foot on the sea, meaning he's seeing, this angel is seeing the whole thing or a panoramic vision. That's what Dr. Kinley saw when he was caught up into the third heaven. He saw what Moses wrote. He saw what Moses wrote or saw, and he saw what John saw. And that's why he's, he's able to explain everything from Genesis 1 and 1 to Revelation 22 last. Because he saw it all from uh, Alpha to Omega. He saw it all from beginning to end. Read. And cried with a loud voice. Mm-hmm. As when a lion roars. Uh huh. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now, when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Read. For, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, uh -huh. I was about to write. Now, John was about to write what the seven thunders uttered. Read. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which. Now, do you have a colon at, at Revelation 10 and 4? There is, um, there is after I was about to write. I was about to write colon. Yep. Just like you have that colon back in Exodus, the 24th chapter. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things. Seal up those things, John. Which the seven thunders uttered mm -hmm. and write them not. And write them not. Now, why couldn't John write the, why, why didn't he write the seven, what the seven thunders are uttered? Exactly, Chuck. It was already written. Moses wrote about it back there in Genesis. That's why John, but John, he's looking at it. He's the seven thunders, and, 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 and Moses, he, he's writing about it. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And he says, let there be. See, as he spoke, it was thunder. That's why it was, it was this, this cloud was lightning and thunders. And as he would speak, it would thunder. The children of Israel, they didn't even want to hear it. Moses, you go deal with him. I don't want to hear him. Why is he talking to me like that? <laughs> Because there was, it was, he was thundering right within their own conscience. And so he was about to write, but he was told not to write because Moses already wrote it in Genesis. And that's why you have those seven days of creation. And on the second day, the waters covered the face of the deep. Why do you have the waters on the second day? Don't you have this brazen labor? Then on the third day, the seed of vegetation coming forth. Everything after its kind. Everything after its kind. This tree after its kind. Bearing seed. On the third day. Or you have that resurrection. On that third day. You have death. You have burial. You have resurrection on the fourth day. Third. The third day. So after he died, buried, and resurrected, he resurrected on the third day. Couldn't be the fourth. But, the, but you do on the fourth day. You have this, this sun placed out in the sky on the fourth day. Mm -hmm. One day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So you count one, two, three, four, that would be as 4,000 years. So you have this physical sun in the sky placed on the fourth day. So Yahshua the Messiah, when He comes, He has to come on those 4,000 years. You see how this thing lines up? And then we talked about this door being, what step was the door? The fourth step. And then Yahshua will come and say, I am the door. And then we talked about how the door, it was nine feet by three feet. So on the fourth step, you have nine feet by three feet. And so this sun, which was placed in the sky on the fourth day, is 93 million miles away. I wonder why that is. Because it's going according to the pattern. 
And then you say, ah, okay, that's just a coincidence. Because really, when you're doing math, because, you know, oftentimes we say things in class, and it's, it's, it, we've been coming for so long that it just seems like it's so common. Oh, you know, when we speak of things like the flesh and think of things like carnal and stuff like that, it's not common for, for, to use these terms. So I, I just want to take the time to explain when you're dealing with Yahweh and you're dealing with math and how he's counting time, zero is a placeholder. So this 4,000 years being as one day, if you have four days, if you had four there, this would be the same thing. Because zero has no value, so you would just cancel out these zeros, and that would be the same. So 4,000, 4, 40, 400, it would be the same thing. That's why you can have the children of Israel on one account. It says they came out after 400 years. And then on another account, you, you have them coming out after 430 years. But because on the fourth step, you have this, gate, this door being three feet wide. So you have 400 or 430. Yahshua, he goes into his ministry 4,000 years. He comes in on the scene 4,000 years. He goes into a ministry at 30 years old. 4,000? 30. Just like you have the 430. The children of Israel, they're coming out 430 years after the Abrahamic promise. So you see how these things line up. You see how they correlate. And you see the reality is Yahshua. That's the reality of all of this. Is Yahshua the Messiah? Five minutes. So the zero is a placeholder when it comes to Yahweh and when it comes to dealing with time. So now you have the 93 million miles away, you have the sun, so 93 plus a bunch of zeros. If you just cancel out those zeros, you have nine three. Now Adam, he is the first created son of Yahweh. Can you get that in Luke, the, the second chapter? I think it's the last couple of verses of Luke, the second chapter, when he starts doing the, the genealogies. Okay. Um, do you know how it's worded at all? Uh, and uh, Enoch was the. Um, I think that's something else. There's no G. Yeah, because it's maybe not, the third yeah. chapter. Okay. Yeah, the third. Um. So the last couple. Last couple of verses. So we're in Luke two, and we'll start at. Uh, Is that Luke two or three? Three. Luke three. I'm sorry, Luke 3, mm -hmm. and we'll start at 37. Mm -hmm. um, which was the son of M Methuselah, uh -huh, which was the son of Enoch. Now, he's giving you the, the genealogies yeah, of the, the whole, generations and how they're coming on down. The whole uh -huh. chapter, yeah. Read. Which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mal Malaleel, which was the son of Canaan, mm -hmm. which was the son of Enos, mm -hmm. which was the son of Seth, mm -hmm. which was the son of Adam, which mm -hmm. was the son of Yahweh. Which was the son of who? Yahweh. Uh, uh, Yahweh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. See, now he was the first created son of Yahweh. See, Adam, he was taken from the dust of the earth, or he was formed right from the dust of the earth, the dust having no shape and form, and then he takes Adam, he places him in shape and form. And then he, he animates that body. Adam being created outside of this garden, Adam, he was then placed in the garden. So him being the first created son of Yahweh, see the both the sons have to go together. This physical son has to go together with the, the true sons. So now you have Adam, when he's, after he partakes of this fruit, see now, there's so much in, the, in this, this event that happened in the garden. Adam, 
He's a type of Yahshua the Messiah. That's why they call Yahshua the Messiah the second Adam. See, Yahshua the Messiah, he died in a garden to fulfill Adam dying in a garden. Now, Eve was Adam's bride, and Eve was taken out of Adam. Now, Adam, he was not deceived. Yes, Adam, he broke the law. Yahweh gave him a law not to partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, Eve, she was deceived by this serpent, and it really wasn't a serpent as you would suppose. It wasn't a snake crawling around on the ground. Because when Moses, when he threw the rod and it turned into a serpent, Moses, he ran away from it. So if it was a snake talking to Eve, you know she wouldn't just stay there just talking to a serpent. But Moses, when he's describing, he says that now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, he was a beautiful, angelic creature. And you can read about that in Ezekiel, how, his, how his, uh, the, the, um, the stones and how all these precious diamonds and all that. You can read about what his appearance was truly like. Now, he wouldn't deceive nobody if he was ugly. So Yahweh made him beautiful. That's why you see all these churches, they're beautiful. I mean, I'm talking about these, these Catholic churches. They have just some the most beautiful stained glass windows and all this art and everything. It's beautiful. And then, then on top of that, they have all these, these like, uh, what do they call those, like, grand pianos where the, the sound just goes throughout the whole church. The organ. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, that's what that's what called. Let's say it one more time. Organ. 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 organ yeah. They have that organ that just, it makes the sound throughout. The, I mean, and it's a beautiful sound. He's, this, this, he's, he's deceiving you by his beauty. It looks so good. You're like, wow, this must be the truth. But Yahshua the Messiah, he was... He was ugly. I'm sorry, but he was ugly. He was not good looking. And those pictures of Jesus they, they put out, and he has all this, this just curly hair. It looked like he just shampooed it. I mean, it just, <laughs> it's not truly how it was. And so now Adam, he being the son of Yahweh, first created son, after he partook or after he instantaneously died within his conscience, as soon as he touched that fruit, because he wasn't deceived. He willingly died for Eve, who was his bride. Now, Yahshua, he wasn't deceived. He took on the sins of the world for us. And he paid the, the death of the outcast dog. I mean, what he had to go through. You look at Passion of the Christ. I mean, he was a bloody mess. A bloody mess. Just like that red. See, Adam, he was a red man. Adam or Adama means red man. But this son, as soon as he died, that sun in the sky had to come down. And as he was coming down, I don't have time to get into it, but you just got to keep on coming back. And, and I hope you got something out of it. And, and all praises be unto Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. That concludes our class for tonight. Hopefully everyone got something out of what was said from the floor. Uh, if you have any questions for any of the things that were spoken of by the speakers, please approach them after the doxology before they leave the building. We have classes here on Fridays from 7.30 to 9.30 and on Sundays from 11 to 1. We still have our Zoom classes on Wednesdays from 7 to 9. If you need that information, please see Dr. Pamela Turner. Let us all rise to be dismissed with the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both for all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.